L'Europe ne se fera pas d'un coup, ni dans une construction d'ensemble. Elle se fera par des réalisations concrètes, créant d'abord une solidarité de fait. Robert Schumann. In May 1950, French Foreign Minister Robert Schumann became the first politician to officially describe Europe as a group of countries cooperating on an economic level. He especially hoped that France and Germany would overcome a historic rivalry. And he wanted countries to join forces in producing and storing coal and steel, and trusting control to a higher authority. So the European coal and steel community was born, involving France, West Germany, Italy, Belgium, the Netherlands, and Luxembourg. The deal was sealed with the Treaty of Paris, signed on April 18, 1951. The six countries involved promised to cooperate for 50 years. The coal and steel agreement was a major step because it established a common market and an authority above the level of individual governments. As the coal and steel market opened up, a treaty for the European defense community failed. The United Kingdom, which had had a military cooperation agreement with France and the Benelux countries since 1948, opposed the new project. Stalin's death in 1953 lessened tensions with the Soviet bloc, and France failed to ratify the defense treaty. As a result, the European political community was stopped dead in its tracks, having already established executive, legislative and judicial branches for a united Europe. The idea of a political community was premature, but it wasn't too early to develop a common market. In 1955, the six countries agreed on a roadmap and planned to meet in Rome two years later to sign a landmark treaty. The so-called Treaty of Rome established the European Atomic Energy Community, which ensured that atomic energy was used for peaceful purposes and coordinated research. It also created the European Economic Community, the first pillar of the future European Union. Union. France, Germany, Italy and the Benelux countries all started developing political relations in agriculture, transport and work. They headed towards the free movement of workers, goods and capital. The market developed, always with the idea that one day Europe could also become a political union. The common market was closed to non-members, so Britain and Sweden formed their own group, the European Free Trade Association, joined by Switzerland, Austria, Denmark, Norway and Portugal. But that's a story for the 1960s.